E is a, a high fidelity open source engine. So it works well for both games and simulations because there's usually there's a large overlap in feature sets between the two. Uh, and you'll notice that we tend to target both, um, you know, as we, you know, do releases, et cetera. Um, so O3D, uh, one of the big strengths for O3D is its modularity. It's uh, one of the few engines where you can actually remove features that you don't need. Most engines, you uh, can uh, add plugins and stuff to add features, but you can't do anything about the features that the engine ships with. Uh, but with O3DE, you can bring it down to bare bones if you need to, and then rebuild based for uh, whatever you need out of O3DE. Uh, so one of the things that we're working on uh, for O3D is interop interoperability, which is the basically porting across different dev environments assets. Like one of the things we're doing is, you know, now is with robotics and being able to port things around there. Uh, but that also applies to any assets. You know, uh, as one of the things is like Epic is a part of uh, the, is one of the members for O3DE. And that is, you know, one of the things they care about is this interoperability as well. Um, and that's going to become more and more important, particularly for game development, as, uh, you know, games get larger and larger and, you know, cloud becomes important. Uh, you know, you need to be able to seamlessly move between, you know, different asset creation packages uh, and, you know, import as well as other content creation uh, tools out there as well. Uh, so cross-platform. So right now uh, we officially support Windows, Linux, and we're working on the iOS, you know, as uh, Lloyd can attest to, we're working on the iOS and Android uh, compatibility as well. Uh, and uh, while Mac is not officially supported, uh, as it still requires you know, a lot of testing and some hardening, uh, you can kind of use that. Uh, not only bring up Mac because Mac is necessary for iOS, um, you know, so if you, you know, all of the important functions for like building assets and everything for iOS do work on the Mac, uh, it's primarily the editor that can be a little bit, um, uh, difficult, uh, on the Mac. So if anybody wants to contribute and help with Mac, uh, support, that would be awesome. Uh, so we're open source and sent, hence my, uh, statement about if anybody wants to contribute, uh, we rely on volunteers essentially to contribute back into the engine. Um, so sometimes it'll be, uh, you know, people who are using O3DE, you know, and they have specific needs and they're willing to, you know, contribute whatever they do to customize O3DE back into O3DE. And sometimes it's just people who like to code or really want to have an impact on a code engine. But, you know, in general, uh, we are defined by the contributions. Uh, and so, you know, feel free to contribute, uh, you know, as much as you are willing to. Uh, uh, again, we're also community driven. It's the same thing. So, you know, community helps determine the roadmaps. Community helps determine, you know, uh, how complete our features are, uh, our quality assurance. Um, and one of the best ways to do that is you can, uh, on Discord, you'll see several SIGs. Each SIG has an ownership of a part of the uh, product, and you can attend those meetings. You can comment, you know, in their chats. Uh, and that is one of the best ways to, uh, drive the future of O3DE. Uh, so we're also cloud friendly, primarily through the, the gem system. We can add uh, functionality for any of the, you can add functionality for any of the providers that are out there, uh, you know, as long as they create gems for it. Uh, and, but it was intended to be a cloud kind of first engine. Uh, so uh, it's pretty easy to integrate, uh, you know, solutions uh, uh, with whoever your cloud services uh, is. And we're actually working with a few people who are using O3D on that specifically. Um, and so you'll just see that continuing to improve, you know, as time goes on. Um, let's see, I see a chat. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see, um, probably next slide. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so there's a specific, because of the modularity of O3DE, and please, uh, people like, you know, Sid and Nick, Chris, et cetera, feel free to chime in <laughs> as we go through these. Um, but uh, we have O3Ds, you can generally break it down into the core modules, 
you know, as listed here. So things like math, memory management, serialization, event messaging, um, and then the authoring tools. So we have the editor, we have script canvas, we have, uh, which is our visual scripting tool. Uh, we have the material uh, editor, we have, um, you know, and it, we're adding some things around shaders as well. So, uh, you know, plenty of authoring tools. And again, if people want to contribute more, that's awesome. Um, so gems, gems is kind of our basic block building block for adding new functionality into O3DE. So it's essentially like a plugin, but like I said before, the difference is you can remove these, even you know some of the basic functionality that comes with O3 if you wish. Uh, but in a lot of cases, you can view gems as plugins, and these will add features. You know, uh, you, they also can be assets only. So if uh, someone wants to author a bunch of assets for O3DE. They can turn that into a gem and distribute it, and users just have to install the gem to gain access to all the assets that are inside of there. Uh, we have uh, asset pipeline tools, and these are constantly being improved and built upon for converting, optimizing, and bundling your assets. And the bundling is important for things like being able to export your projects out uh, so that it's shippable. And then we also have uh, you know the ability to package your project you know, so that you can put it up on Steam or onto the Google or iOS stores. Um, and that covers the basics. Is there anything that anyone else wants to add to that, like Chris or Sid? Because we also have Atom, uh, which is our graphics renderer, which is a huge part of O3DE. And it, it's the uh, primarily provides that high fidelity rendering um, uh, for O3DE. I, I mean, I don't have anything specific to add. Uh, it's a renderer, as Joe mentioned, it serves a lot of features. Uh, if there's a specific feature we want to get into, we can. Um, at the moment, the supported platforms are the Steam platforms, Linux, Mac, and um, PC, iOS, and Android. So it has three backends, um, Metro, Vulkan, and DX12. And it has all myriad of features that is all available online if you want to see the exact feature set. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so this slide covers the O3D workflow. Uh, so, you know, generally, you'll, if there's features that you want to add, you'll add them uh, either at project creation or later. Um, you know, via gems. Um, and then uh, you then would author things like, you know, through Script Canvas or Lua, if you want, you know, for your gameplay scripting, you'd use the prefab system for placing down your objects. Uh, you would, you know, and the editor is your primary interface for that. Uh, you would use uh, things like the material editor and for, uh, you know, texturing your models, et cetera. And you would also would use uh, emotion effects for animations. Uh, and you can also use things like Blender as well to create your models and add the materials and everything else and then import those, you know, straight into O3DE. Um, the, uh, then once, let's see, I'm having a hard time seeing. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so when you um, create your build, or once you're, you've done all that, you've created your project, and then you, you decide that you want to um, uh, export, you can, and it'll only include the pieces that you actually use, um, and that you only ship the assets required by your project. Um, and then the other piece too is like, if you want cloud functionality, you would include those as the gem, and we have a networking component uh, where you could do things like multiplayer or, you know, uh, very large scale simulations and things like that uh, uh, in there. Uh, any specific question? Well, I guess we're going to do question Q and A in a little bit, so never mind. Um, so the next slide. Okay, so you know the editor. So if you've opened O three D at all, you're uh, probably familiar with the editor. <laughs> so that's your primary interface for, uh, you know, working with objects, prefabs, uh, you know, scripting, et cetera. You, all of that is usually done in the editor. And then you have the renderer, which is which is referred to as Atom. Uh, uh, that is the name for it. 
uh, you know, you can configure features, uh, you know, how you want uh, Atom to render. And as, uh, you know, Sid stated, uh, there are several backends we use around Vulkan, you know, uh, DirectX, uh, Metal, et cetera, uh, uh, for that. Now, programming wise, um, you can create things using C++. You can create things using our like scripting. So uh, Script Canvas for the visual side. And if you are more hands-on, you could also use Lua as well uh, for scripting. Uh, so there's a lot of ways in O3DE to do what you need to do uh, for whatever your project is. Uh, so networking cloud, as I mentioned before, you know, there's there's gems uh, for cloud uh, and O3DE comes with what, uh, the AZ networking, uh, which is an entire, you know, module around, you know, being able to implement things like multiplayer, et cetera. And you'll see more coming in the future uh, around cloud and networking uh, for O3DE. And then uh, animation, that's the emotion effects. And this is where it's kind of and it's a really cool interface where you can um, set up uh, your animations, you know, put your modeling, set up animations, and you can do motion matching and all sorts of you know, cool things for your, uh, and have it respond to controls and everything. But it's a fully, featured visual animation suite uh, inside of O3DE, and it's pretty awesome. Um, and then uh, for packaging and assets, like we currently support Windows, Linux, Linux server, uh, and iOS for packaging, and, and we are working on Android support uh, for packaging. And, and that's the ability to say, hey, I'm done with my project. I want to get it out to the public. And so it will package it all up and you know, into a single package that you can distribute however you want, whether that's putting it on a store or, you know, uh, putting it up in a bucket somewhere and allowing people to download it or emailing it to a friend, however you want to do it. Uh, but that's uh, what the system allows.